I begin to see the train of the Lord's robe this morning. His glory. It's designed to more than pass by, it's to reside. I feel today that He wants us to come into his presence. He's in, there's an invitation here. There are so many angels in this room, but they, they're, they're, they're preparing. They're preparing us for an, an entrance into a greater level of glory. The church must move into a greater level of glory because we're getting ready to move into a war season in the natural realm. And one of the things that God has done through history is to prepare for that by soaking his people in a confidence of who he is, his presence. The ancients desired to see his face. Show me your face. Why? Why the face? Probably 30 or more years ago, <clears throat> Um, pardon my voice when I get some shots I would, this, it affects my throat somehow but it was about 30 years ago my grandparents were in their 80s And the the power of the face was made very real to me. I began to understand why the ancients would seek the face. That's what they wanted. Show me your face, show me your face. From Moses and others. I sat there one evening, I was down with the guys and I was deer hunting, but would stay with them. And as I looked over at my grandmother's face, And then my, my, my grandfather. I couldn't help but read their face. You could read it. You could just look and read the face and that's what this is really referring to because within the face you read life. They didn't know I was reading it, but I was. I can see it in my grandmother's eyes. My 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 grandpa wrinkled. I was across the room, but you could see there's the wrinkles and there, there are life wrinkles. They came about through life and living. So 
Well, on, on, the, on the face, you're reading the history, if you pay attention. For example, my, my grandmother, she could barely see. Her glasses were, they were so thick. She couldn't really see just a little bit. Though I read that history some 40 years. I lived with them for a while. I never heard her complain. Not once. You would have thought she would have complained about that. When we're talking about God, obviously we're not talking about poor vision or any wrinkles. But we are talking about history. And the ancients wanted to look in the face because to them, they were looking into the soul of that individual. They, they were looking to see life, what, what made them tick, what made them, what made them work. What is their history? And of course, the eyes are sometimes called the windows of the soul. You can, you can see so much just when you look in someone's face. You can read pain. You can read, read discomfort. You can read, read peace. Here's a man that we just sang about. who talked regularly with the most powerful people on the planet at that time, Moses. Miracles like we, we've never seen, at least I've never seen, powerful signs and wonders. But he didn't say, I want to see the signs and wonders. But I want to see the river turned blood in, I don't want to see the lightnings and the flashes of, of power through the heavens or feel the mountain shake or Red Sea just open. Can you imagine being someone that saw that? I think about that sometimes. I think about those kind of things. He was best friends with God. God he could have probably asked God for about anything. But he said, your face. I see what you do. I, I see the evidence of your power. I see the evidence of your life. I've seen what you can do. I want to see your face. Think about that a little further. We know he didn't because it, if God said, or allowed him to see his face, it, it would, he would die. So God had to put his hands over his, over his face so that he could pass by. But, but, think about what he said. I've thought about this so many times. He was willing to die 
was willing to die if he could just see God's face. It's not taken to be taken in a literal way. It's the passion. It's how passionate he was to go after God. We've got to start seeing that kind of passion. I want to I want to know who you are. I want to know who you are inside. I want to know how you think. I want to know. Give me some water. I want to know how you think. I want to know how you feel. I want to see into who you are. That is something that I feel much of the, the body of Christ today has lost. I'm not throwing stones at anyone could be the busyness of life. I, I don't know. Certainly we don't live in tents and on the side of a mountain and have all day to think about things, food provided with quail and manna. But that holy passion, if if it were to kill me, I would still come after your presence. Again, not literal. God's not out to kill us. Say, come here, let me kill you. No. He let him come, but he did shield him from that. And Moses is one of those rare individuals that knew God's ways. He didn't just know his actions, he knew his ways. He read God. He was a reader of God, a reader of life. To be a functioning ecclesia, to be a functioning people, to be a functioning heir, we've got to learn to read the heart of God. If we were to read that heart today, what would we read? It's evident in God's word what we would read. He hasn't shielded us from the truth of that. And of course, thankfully in our days, he's not passing by. He resides He's not passing by today. He's here. He is here. He's the omnipresent one here. Here right now. Saying, read my presence today. Look into my face. Not in a literal way, but in a biblical way. We know his eyes, her eyes filled with compassion. Maybe you need that compassion today. It's, it's that kind of love, that kind of acceptance. You just need it. If you were, if you were really read his presence today, that compassion's here. And that his compassions never fail, they fail not. If we would take the time to gaze at him, we'd see a peace that never ends. It's so deep. There's no troubledness in his countenance. There's no fear there. Transcending peace. 
a spiritual force that's available from him, from his presence, anytime. Concern, the concern of the father for his kids, evident in that face. But the history of who he is, the history on that face. Read it. He speaks, and worlds come into being. He declares, be, and it is. There's a confidence in his face. It's not arrogant, it just is. He can do anything. You look at him, you're, you're looking at supreme confidence. It's not, it's not a look of faith, he doesn't believe that he can do anything, he knows he can. You look at him, you're looking at somebody that knows he can do it. It would do the church a, a great deal. It, it would help them a great deal if you would look at this world and see how deprived it is, but then take a look at the Father's face. handle it he's, he's got this I heard three times different times this week from people that should know better that the world is so bad no longer redeemable Nothing's ever going to happen. And I felt that kind of pallor over the people of God. I may address it, may address it next week, I don't know. But when I talked last week about don't lose your focus, I feel like at least some of the body of Christ has lost their focus. You look at the world, what a mess. But you look at God, there's a different focus. I don't focus on the mess, I focus on the most confident being anywhere. And in the face of it all, you say, yeah, he can handle this. I don't know what you're facing today. But the tendency is for your focus to go to that. And I feel like he's saying, no, look, look at me. You ever have somebody in a difficult time? I have a couple of times. And you're just going along doing your thing, you know, and it's not doing good and you're griping, you're complaining. And somebody just gets you in your face and says, look at me. Look, look at me. That's not, it's not going to be that way forever. That's, that's not how it is. Look at me. And you kind of snap to attention. I feel like God's saying that to his church. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I've never called you to do anything that you couldn't, that I couldn't help you do. There's no situation I can't change. There's no mess I can't fix. There's no body I can't heal. There's no emotion I can't heal. There's no son or daughter that I can't reach. That there's, there's no prodigal fallen so far that I can't, I can't get in that pig pen and pull them back. Look, 
Don't you look at me. Look at me. But our focus is drawn so often to whatever the difficulty is, the, the, the trouble, the, the hassle, the frustration, because those are all real and those real things or even any area of relationships, those real things draw our focus. But I feel like today that Father, in a loving way, please know that, not a, a mean way. But I feel like he's putting his hands on our shoulders and saying, would you look at me? Would you, would you look at me? Look at who I am. Look at my history. Have I ever failed? Have I ever promised one thing that didn't come to pass or will come to pass? Have I ever? Have I ever not been there when you, when you reached out to me? The history of who God is. So in a, in a, in a, in a way, he's, he's like reaching to us and saying, would you look at me and, and look at my history, look at who I really am. Yeah, I'm, I'm God. I'm your father. But you've been walking around all over the planet and you haven't stopped and just looked at me. So I feel like today that I, he's, he's making it an issue, but in a, in a good way. There are deep things in life that happen to everyone. No one is exempt. If we had the time and took the time, each one of you could tell your story. Here's what has, here, here's what has drawn my focus. My focus has been on this or that. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying in light of who he is, focus different. There have been times in my life when the focus of situations was almost overwhelming. And I've had to just, on purpose, show me your face. Show me your face, God. I want to look higher than this, higher than something I can't change, higher than than a difficulty that it looks impossible to me. I'm going to look higher than that. I'll look to your face. I'm going to read your history. And in reading that history, I'll be able to read my answer. I can make it to the end. If I could just see your face, I can make it. I can make it if I can see you. Something's happening. Lift your countenance to the face of God. Hear this. 
you hear this more than just words it's life it's life it's life what mountain are you on life has its mountains doesn't it you ever face a big one Moses did I've had a few big ones What's the mountain? What's the mountain? What's the mountain you're facing in other states, maybe other nations today? Yeah, I'm on a mountain. Boldly seek his face. Something's happening. There's a presence here, but take it to a different level. Press beyond the veil today. Let's just let the Father minister. Moses, we're looking to you, Lord. More, more than just the author and finisher of our faith. You're the in-between one also because of your history, who you really are. Lord, I just thank you for comforting those today that need it. Feel, Lord, there were thousands of people today that just needed to refocus on you. You, you, you. Your history says we can make it. We can make it. That, that's, that's his history. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. All of you watching, you're going to make it. Look at his face. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He can do one in, more in one line of a song than we can do all day preaching. In fact, I think I just preached. I feel like that was what God wanted to do. I felt that one, yeah. Amen. Amen.